Welcome to the second episode of Operan series. Today, we will discuss the Operan philosophy, which means the main principle of Operan. So let's start. Today, we will discuss the most important principle of Operan, RAN disaggregation, virtualization, and open interfaces. Operan philosophy has many principles. But the first principle we will discuss now is RAN disaggregation. As you can see on the left hand side, current RAN technology is provided as a hardware and software integrated platform. That means the site has a software and the hardware as a bundled package from one vendor. That means each cell site had a baseband unit which is sent data to and from the site radio unit and the core network and then the PPU was a proprietary piece of hardware of fixed capacity. So now let's discuss how RAN disaggregation will improve this philosophy. Open RAN is about disaggregated RAN. That means disaggregation the, fun the functionality built using open interfaces uh, specs between the different elements. So we will have a read unit distributed unit and centralized unit. So in this case, the PPU is this aggregation to the DU and CU and the DU sites near the read unit and support real time processing, including communication between user and cell site. CU can be placed on the site or remotely and handle multiple VDUs, simplifying the network architecture and also improving the reliability. Here uh, we will see some component or some transport interfaces, new words like open front hole, open mid hole, and uh, the traditional open back hole. In this case, we can see open front hole is connect the radio unit with the DU, open mid hole is between DU and the CU, and the back hole is between CU and core network. Here, with this aggregation, we had a decoupling also of this aggregation between hardware and software. You can see in the traditional, the software and the hardware is bundled, tight, cobbled to the same vendor. However, here in Operan, you can get a hardware from vendor A and software from vendor B, and they can work as an interoperability between each other uh, very well. So here, you can have many benefits by this aggregation Zaran. As you can see, the benefit first one is supply chain diversity. That means uh, you don't need to anymore lock in, in one vendor and you can have a paste of bread solution from different vendors, software vendor, hardware vendor, cloud uh, vendors, uh, platform vendors. So this is one of the benefit of uh, this aggregation that end. Second one is the site deployment flexibility. For example, based on the uh, solution or deployment you need to deploy, you can select the best place to host the DU and CU based on latency or throughput uh, requirement and data center uh, by pooling some resources in data center, uh, reside some uh, resources in the EG data center or even in the site itself. And the third one, reduce operator uh, dedicated hardware cost. Uh, and that mean uh, you need the software can run on any codes or commercial of the shelf hardware, not a purpose built hardware. So this is the first uh, principle of Operan. Second one is related to first one, uh, uh, is called virtualization and cloudification. And here when we are talking about virtualization, virtualization is uh, not a new concept in uh, telecom, but it's uh, a new in telecom, but it's uh, very old in IT. Virtualization removes hardware dependencies from a network running on commercial servers and cloud platform. So in traditional RAN operators had no other option than proprietary RAN hardware and software that must be deployed together. However, Operan provides full interoperability with the vendor agnostic 
commercial of the shelf costs uh, like x86 server and support multiple platform it can be also integrated with any commercial uh, cloud platform like amazon for example as it's based on Kubernetes open source or it's based on vnf for example so we will touch this topic again in the upcoming episodes so with Oberan, operator has a choice to select the optimal solution for each network element, including operating system, hardware, software, enabling a dynamic multi-vendor network environment. And there are many benefits of virtualization. First is code server. So the VDU and the VCU can run, as you can see here, when you are talking about virtualization, we added V, it means virtual uh, DU or virtual C. Here, video and uh, VCU run on the common uh, of the shelf servers, reducing uh, like operator uh, dedicated hardware costs. And the cost server are x86 based standardized uh, component and are uh, ready available from various supplier, for example. Uh, second one is the standardized interfaces. So, with uh, with virtualization, for example, of a network comes the need of standardized interfaces, uh, which will allow the operator to integrate network functions from multiple vendors, assured that they will work together seamlessly. It's called interoperability. The third one is simplified deployment. And simplified deployment, the software now, uh, only VDU and VCU can be a software. So, that means this service can be managed in less time with fewer resources. So previous deployment often required hardware exchanges in which it, like you need to go to the site and uh, make a rip and rip, uh, replace operation, physically swap out new equipment for the old and expensive and the time con, uh, consuming procedures. So with uh, Operan or Virtualize RAN software upgrades for the even largest deployment can be managed remotely providing saving on both the equipment and uh, travel and the manual uh, upgrades. And uh, also here we are talking about better resource utilization by pooling of baseband resource. And this is already like this benefit you can see in the CRAN or centralized end. When we pool of baseband resource, allow network demand to determine uh, uh, needed resources, the separation of software and hardware in the video and the VCU, Lists new resources to be assigned when, the where, uh, when and where required for local uh, radio real-time processing or centralized for controlled function. So resource pooling uh, provides operator with cost saving as they don't need to buy hardware designed for P loads, knowing that software will adjust as necessary to maintain optimum performance. So you don't need, for example, to get uh, one site here. Uh, let's see. So an example, so if you have a site here and site here, you don't care about the load as everything will be managed by CU to, to see what is, if this is high congested, you can uh, have some enough resources from another site as there are a pooling between the resources here, okay? So this is for Operan uh, philosophy, virtualization and cloudification. And third one is the open internal RAN interfaces. So open RAN philosophy also have this very important concept of open interfaces. And this interfaces has two types, interfaces defined by 3GBB and interfaces uh, like uh, identified by ORAN Alliance. This group we will discuss in more uh, details in the upcoming episode, but at least we need to understand, for example, open mid hall. It's in 5G, we have something is called F1. So this F1 is already, or is called higher layer split, internet communication, all of them is defined by 3GBB. However, if we are going to open front hall, you can see new internal uh, interfaces, it's called ORAN lower layer split, uh, like uh, for example, uh, between DU and the RU, you have some like S plane, U plane, M plane, and uh, uh, management plane. And also, sometimes you will find some interfaces, new interfaces between the managed uh, system and this kind of radio unit is called in two nodes. Uh, we will discuss about the ORAN architecture in the upcoming episode, but at least we need to understand 3GBB defines some interfaces, ORAN defined another interfaces, and the ORAN 
try to make this interface. This is the most important one between RU and DU, so you can get RU from customer, uh, from vendor A, DU from vendor B, and uh, the interoperability will working uh, fine between them. So this is the main principles of Oran. So uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get notification for the upcoming Operan episodes. And if you have any questions or query, please leave a comment on YouTube video comment sections. See you in the next episode.